let's see how she looks with lenses and with makeup and then they have me take it off. They say, no, we like you the way you are. I think I've danced for almost three years just for this one song, Dola Re Dola. Even when you wake me up in my sleep, I'll be like, Dola Re Dola. So, oh in this cinema God. feels like a logical step, no? Um. Sai, first of all, I want to tell you how thrilled I am that this is finally happening. Thank you. I am an ardent admirer and I am so, so happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. She's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> no, genuinely. Genuinely. And our, everyone on the team was super excited. Uh, you know, I look at your career and it just feels like a series of impossibilities. Right? It's only seven years that yeah. you made that blockbuster debut with Premal. Um, here you are, you're actually a trained medical doctor, you're an incredible dancer, but no connection to the movies. And you are now one of the finest actors in the country. You are called Lady Superstar. I saw one video which said Lady Pavan Kalyan. Oh my God. I was like, Lady Pavan Kalyan? But, but the point is, do you ever feel like, wow, my life is a fairy tale? I do. I do. I always thought that I was a special kid. My mom always made me feel like I was God's child. So I thought, okay, this has to happen at this point of time. But Ye uh, hai tha. Yeah, but that was before. Right now, I realize that a lot of things are for a different purpose uh, altogether. It's just not about me. It's about a unit, all of us together, how we mm, influence each other's lives. So... And that's why I think I'm a little cog in the um, whole process, that's all. But it's like the performances, you know, when I, mm. when I, from Premam to uh, Pawai Kadigal, Pawai Kadigal I, yeah. to, to Gargi, right? Uh, there's such a authenticity, there's such a honesty. And you've said that, you know, it, it's not that you, you never wanted to slot yourself that I'm a method actor or I'm a this kind of actor. Well, the only thing I found was that you talked about how you meditate, you put yourself into a neutral gear and you go to a set. But is it really as simple as that? Um, I think getting into a role is a little more easier compared to getting out of it. Because as a person, uh, you know, you're made up of a set of values and thoughts and that you believe in. And each character that I play, I'll have to break it down to accept that uh, character, the world that she's been put in. So once I come out of these roles is when I feel like, so who am I and what am I actually doing? So these roles have uh, been hard on me post the a process of shooting it. So getting into the character has been a little easier. You just need to talk to yourself about how she might feel or how I might approach a particular um, situation if I was in her shoes. And it's easy. But once you become that person, to come out of that and be who you were before, you can't go back to who you were before that. So right now, if you ask me what my thoughts are, what my values are, or anything that I grew up thinking, now it's... A uh, new learning and I think I've become more um, accepting of the society, the world and it's nice. It's a very um, spiritual process for me. <laughs> Movies are like that. So when the director calls action, you find the expressions just emerge or are you in control of what is happening? Because like Alia says that I don't know what's going to come. And it comes. Uh, is it like that for you? True. Actually, yes. I think once the director calls action, everything was blank for me. And uh, I think once I start shooting for the film itself, I feel like I am the character. So anything that comes out of me is as authentic as I can produce. So I don't have to do a rehearsal before that, before I go there, because there's something that happens in that moment that I don't know if I can recreate that so in the green room. I was just, no, but I was going to ask you, can, are you as good on like your seventh take as you are on the first? Can you repeat? Um, I can repeat, but um, I have a feeling that the first one has something that is a little That's a special. Magic. Yeah, I'll have to go and look at it a few more times, but I know in my head that it isn't as uh, original as the first take. And you go to the monitor after every shot you said to see what mistakes yes, you've made yes, and correct yes. it. That doesn't take you out of the character. 
No, it doesn't. Because every time they uh, call action, I feel like I am the person and going through that. But there's one flaw. Every time I experience that pain or any sort of emotion, by the fourth, fifth take, my body gets a little uh, tolerant to that emotion. And I feel like, oh, no, my body's done with it. I don't feel like crying anymore. It's out of my life now. <laughs> so it becomes this defense mechanism. So I have to pray that it gets okay in the first few takes. <laughs> yeah. So... In a sense, tell me if I'm getting this right. This this incredible um, talent of yours is not something you have full control over. Yeah. Right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. It's 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 I, I. To be honest, I think everybody in the field of arts they here to do something which is bigger than you know themselves so even if you call me talented I think I'm here for a reason and what happens through me is beyond my control and it's for a reason so I don't take too much to my heart I just think that I'm happy that I'm doing something that I love you know you said that um, you want to be part of films where you're part of the plot or you are the plot uh, because, and this is what I found fascinating, you said, I'm not talented enough to just stand in a scene yeah. on the side and not do anything. What did you mean? So, like you said, I like influencing the plot or being the plot, but it takes something for you to be there and uh, not have the director ask you to do much or the scene um, requiring you to do something, but you still bring something out you have a sort of grace and you um, exude some sort of, uh, I think, a magnetic power that people still want to look at you. They think that this is nice, this girl is either, uh, you're spellbound by her beauty or the way she carries herself. So I don't know if I can do that. I need to have a purpose. I, I Even if you put me there, I have done, I think, two films which had me do that. But I know that there's this little discomfort inside because I feel like I should be reacting right now. If I was here watching this, this is, this is what I would do. But the scene is not about me. So I can't do that. So that is why it takes something for you to hold back and still give your best without feeling that discomfort in you. So you also said that the three directors who kind of change the way you approach characters are Al Alphonse Putrin, Shekhar Kamula mm. and Vetri Yeah. How did they do this? What did they enable you to think through? Each in ways which are very different or uh, things that I needed to hear at that point of time. That is how I know that they had a huge influence over um, how I thought of life or work. Alphonse, I think, in, I was a very insecure person. I had a lot of doubts about, like any teenager, uh, my voice, the way I look, my, my acne and all of that. But I know when um, a director picks you for a film and he has so much of hope and confidence that this girl is something. And when you see the audience cheer for this person, when I, I saw the first day first show, so when I saw them... For Premam. For Premam. I, I flew down from Georgia just for the first day first show and I saw them clap. I was thinking, okay, it's just me on screen. Are they doing that for me? <laughs> and it was a very surreal moment. So I realized that people love you beyond your skin and how you are as a person, uh, in a sense, the physical aspect. And they love the character and how you emote. So... Um, that helped me become a much more confident person. And, uh, you know, like before we sat, you asked me, do you want to sit to your left, right? I, I think in my first film, I had to lose that because I didn't know what was going to work. And I realized they still loved me. So any side is fine. <laughs> so that's how I feel confident right now because of Alphonse. And Shekhar Kamula taught me how to be, uh, or at least made me realize that um, sometimes as a, a a sweet girl, I tend to not trouble people if I feel uncomfortable. I keep it to myself and I try to move around, uh, try to adjust to that environment. He taught me to speak out. He uh, told me that if you're uncomfortable, you need to ask for it. These are your rights. You shouldn't hold back. And I was shooting for his film and he said, you know, you don't have to show up today if you feel you're not treated right. So it takes something. And if um, uh, there are I think the most number of uh, women in the sets I've seen in his um, 
films and you know that everybody is treated equal so he taught me that uh, about how to be strong unapologetic and still be true to yourself and he's a child at heart and i don't know how he still retains that side of his and finally vetri marin sir i think um the way he thinks about uh life or how he looks at work um i think from there uh, he spoke about a lot of things say spirituality and we had conversations that way so yeah you know uh, you talked about having insecurities when when you did premom and and you know having acne and being insecure about that right uh side to date you don't wear makeup right <laughs> and this is an incredible thing because we live in a world of instagram filters nobody even wants to be on social media without makeup you are hmm. doing entire films without makeup and when you do put on makeup i think you wore eyeliner in yeah. sham singer yeah. and it becomes like oh my god she's wearing eyeliner <laughs> okay <laughs> which is crazy um, how did you get the confidence to do that is it because of premum where you felt like i don't need to do this for premum and the films that came after that um i did put on makeup say during the uh, photo shoots that we have before uh, test shoots that we have before uh, we start shooting and most of the directors would you know want to try let's see how she looks with lenses and with makeup and then they have me take it off they say no we like you the way you are <laughs> so just come and you emote and i've realized that in in cinema at least you don't need to have a very different attire or hair do it does help but uh, how well written a character is will show you in a very different shade if uh, you look different from film to film but you have pretty much the same kind of character traits i don't know if the difference is loud but if your uh, character is well written then you look different in every film and you have an opportunity to bring out different emotions which make you look like a different person so in that way i think i had directors who um, been very happy with uh the no makeup look because most of the films required me to play much more relatable and uh um, a girl next door maybe and sham singh roy was one uh film which I had to play a classical dancer so i had to have the kajal and extra um eyeliner and stuff which i did on my own <laughs> i did it myself no makeup artist no i think they couldn't uh, get the right level so i said no let me do it myself they hate me <laughs> because i keep doing everything my hairdresser also every time he comes most of my films they have me uh, uh, you know just do a normal braid and when i walk inside i can't be perfect so i start pulling parts of it here and everything i just worked on her hair and there's nothing that i've got to do but she just pulls it out the same way so my my staff they feel really bad <laughs> around me but you know the trick they, there is a whole art of having makeup that looks like you're not wearing makeup right yeah, but yeah. you've never even wanted to do that for you no makeup yeah. is actually no makeup yeah and i've had good uh, cinematographers who do the light uh, the lighting so perfectly that you actually don't realize i think only when they are um, say post production when they uh, edit or at that point of time they realize the pores and then they're like oh okay she doesn't have makeup on and the way most of the time they just don't uh, know in in the hindi film industry sai uh glamour is a very essential part there's a lot of pressure on women to look a certain way and and being glamorous is a sort of a career strategy it leads to more brands it leads mm-hmm. to maybe bigger films is it for you like just a relief to not worry about any of that and just think about the character i think it's maybe the person that i am i don't uh, know the other side of how it might feel so i actually i know where maybe there's a lot of pressure to look a uh, perfect or your perfect version and uh, i'm not saying that makeup doesn't help but if it makes you feel confident then you should do it i feel confident this way and i think i'm doing fine so you're doing <laughs> yeah. more than fine you're doing much yeah. much more than fine okay so here's my thesis about you right <laughs> that you as an artist say i like a trojan horse we okay look at you and we think you're one thing but actually what you're doing is something else okay let me explain so we look at you and and you know you have such a uh, sort of ingrained warmth about you you okay. seem just 
just really lovely. You have this amazing long hair. You have this gorgeous smile. Mm. You feel very warm. You feel very unthreatening, right? Okay. okay? But the brilliance of your performances, mm. the strength of your characters in the films that you do, the actual themes of those films and what mm. you're saying in those films is subverting the status quo, is subverting the patriarchy. Uh, so in a sense, you are a disruptor in disguise. Okay, <laughs> you're so sweet. Do you agree <laughs> with my great thesis? No, I think all of us are very complicated people. We know where we'll have to be a certain way to, uh, you know, uh, set our ways or our comfortable environment. I'm this way all the time, but when it comes to work, uh, to bring your best and to bring your um, the most in that moment, you know which is um, that particular element that works. So you try to converse, you try to talk to people, either with your writers or directors, and then you try to get the best so that the best result comes on screen. So uh, I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you said all of these sweet things, but I don't give it a lot of thought. I think I'm true to that moment, wherever I am right now, I am this way because this is me. But that is also me in a different environment and with different people. That is all. Well, it is no strategy, definitely. <laughs> no, I, I actually didn't mean that it is a strategy. What, what I meant is that's what makes you so powerful. Um, you. Because, you know, that, that you go in thinking a certain way and, and you, you know, the, and, and what you get is something else. And, and I think that's it's just terrific what you're doing and the films Thank you're you. doing. And the strength with which you're pushing back on people not reducing you to a prop. Because that's very easy and that's what happens with so many talented women, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just glad with how things are turning out to be. But yeah, I am happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about the dancing. Now, apparently your mom says you were dancing in her womb. Yes. Yes. Uh, so she believes that uh, mom isn't a dancer, but she believes that when I was in her belly, she started dancing. So she thought that I had it in me, the, the daughter who was going to be born. It's going to be a son daughter. So her, when she was pregnant with you, her response at one point suddenly was, I want to dance. She would just play some music and start dancing. And she said she's never had the urge before. So now she knew that there's something special about this child in my belly who I think might be a dancer. So growing up, she thought she saw me cut classes and go and dance. And she realized that I had a lot of love for dancing. And she put me in a, a Bharatanatyam class. I was not a very disciplined child. I couldn't do the basics for long. I wanted new steps and new uh, uh, something different every other day. So I came out of class. So I've never learned dance. I've uh, grown up watching um, Madhuri Dikshit ma'am and uh, Aishwarya Rai ma'am's dances. Saroj Khan uh, choreographed for Saroj Khan. So she had choreographed most of the dances. I think I've danced for almost three years just for this one song, Dola Re Dola. And <laughs> I'm not ashamed, but I hope nobody goes looks for those videos. It's the same steps over and over. So <laughs> since school, I've been doing that. Uh, at 16, I did that for a dance show and for the same dance show in another <laughs> place. <laughs> oh that was God, your signature is... step. No, it was my my go-to dance because I liked it so much, yeah. and I could do it like even when you wake me up in my sleep, I'd be like do, Valare, do. <laughs> so I know that song inside out. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I know that I um, I didn't realize growing up that dance would play a major role in uh, uh, disciplining me or bringing some sort of uh, rhythm in my body. So I owe it all to dancing and mom letting me pursue what I loved even when I, as a child. So that's incredible that, that neither are you a trained actor but you're not, mm. not even a trained dancer. Yeah. You just do this. I you know. just do Rowdy Baby which just has 1.4 billion views on YouTube. Oh God. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm happy that they... I'll be happy if people just watch me dance and they are happy in return. I, I don't know whether I'm the best dancer because I know there are so many brilliant dancers out there. I just have the opportunity to perform. So if you're able to view the dance and you feel happy that minute, I think that's that's good enough for me. <laughs> that's enough. So you grew up, Sai, in Coimbatore. You're speaking Badga and Tamil. Yes. Now you're thinking in English and Telugu, but you also dub for Malayalam. Correct? Yeah. Have I got all the languages correct? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. So, 
when you speak so many languages or at least have a functional mm-hmm. understanding mm-hmm. of so many languages mm-hmm. um and you're you're moving between three major film industries does it sort of enable you to be a better artist because can you take the best practices of one place to another i um i don't know why i think in english so every language that i um end up uh reading the script i the thoughts that come in my mind or even in the scene it runs in english and after that it's just me getting the lines right and um uh, being true to that moment to be honest um right now if you ask me i think telugu uh, runs in my head louder than uh english sometimes i think recently i was trying to uh, dub in a particular language and you know you go back to english or tamil but i started speaking in telugu so i realized right now telugu is leading in that way i don't know why maybe i uh, i've owned that up as a language that uh, has me and i have the language but otherwise i just think in english so it doesn't um it's not very difficult for me to pick a language and uh, make it my own but it does when it comes to the physical aspect of how you um perform a certain role i um i can be somebody who's working in an office and still speak a particular language but it's the body language and what you bring that makes a lot of difference i feel so yeah there are scenes where you don't even have to talk but you know there are actors who just sit there and you know that they're doing a phenomenal job so in in that way i trying to get that right the language doesn't seem to be a big threat right now And so when does Hindi come into all of this given that you your first dance performance was to Dil to Pagal hai Oh yes how did you know right yes first grade yes so oh hindi cinema God. feels like a logical step no um i think when the time is right if i'm required to be here and you know if i'm blessed to play good roles i would love to to hindi films Are you exploring at all? Are you open to getting scripts? Are people sending you scripts? They are. I have very interesting scripts uh, that I've read, but we'll see when it manifests. I think you'll see me, and then we'll do another interview this way. But, but the process is Haan, underway. Yeah. yeah Excellent. Yeah, okay. Are you in Pushpa too? No, I'm not. Sometimes I feel very strange when they. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they think that I could be in the film, but. there are few films i i think they're just rumors and i don't want to take the time and then you know answer Clarify. to yeah every yeah. rumor i thought it wasn't required the one with i think recent um, talupati vijay sir and ajit sir and all of them they're all rumors and i i don't know what to say i'm just quiet so so are you the kind of actor who would reach out to a director or a scriptwriter and say look i'd love to work with you or do you just wait for stories to find you i i wait uh, i don't know whether it's the right way to go but sometimes i believe that if i meant to play a particular a particular role i think the director somehow finds this person oh okay who is she let's see what she can present or um because that's how alphonse found me i was nowhere i was in i was not in india he had seen some dance of mine from 4 years ago and he thought he can call me and have me play that role so Sometimes I believe that if you're meant to play a particular particular role, nobody can stop it from reaching you, and uh, that is all. So, so you are still following that first principle yeah. of. I I think that's what. Well, yeah, I think yeah, that's just a belief that I have. But you also have no manager. You have come without any entourage. Uh, <laughs> how does this work? <laughs> I I think that's how I can function. Otherwise, it becomes a lot. pressure uh, i don't have a manager for a reason because i um like to speak to the director or the producer myself just to know what the um, what it is you don't want I people do not, in between i yeah i want to know it for what it is i because i i it's not like it's a big deal i want to know what because we're all going to work on a film i don't need a middle person so you can call me directly and we can talk about it and we'll see how it goes um so in that way i prefer not having a manager and also that i like doing everything a certain way and if it's not me i don't know if it's done right so that might be another reason 
I'm sorry if it sounds a little weird, but I like doing things my way. So that's one. And uh, the entourage thing, I, I think I can take care of myself right now and I don't need a lot of help. But Sai, you go to sleep at nine. Nine. And you wake up at four. Yeah. What do you do at four? I don't know. I think when I was in Georgia, I would sleep early and wake up at 3.30 every day so that I can study for my classes. To be a doctor. That. Yeah. So because I got into that practice at a very young age, it, I, I wake up every day at 3.30. Even if I force myself to sleep, I kind of wake up at 3.30 and then I have to force myself to sleep after that. Otherwise, I'm up uh, and I, it's a little difficult to stay up after 9.00. So most of the directors I work with, they have a lot of fun when they work with me post nine because it's like having a child on the sets. So they just tell me, saying, Pallavi, just fall. I would fall because my head goes into that autopilot mode. I'll do anything that you ask me to do post nine. And it's less threatening for them. Otherwise, during the day, I ask them, how can I improvise? How can I do this? And all that. You're and asking just, too many questions. No, not too many questions. They like the banter. Of course, they no, like I'm that. just kidding. Because yeah. I remember for Sham Singh Haroi, uh, the night we shot in the night and uh, it was that I think a little dance bit and me falling on um, Nani and then he picks me up. I had done exactly what the director wanted me to do and then the next morning, so we shoot the next night. So the whole day I couldn't do anything because in my head I know that I could have done it better. I know I could have done that point better. So I went back and I spoke to him. If we are shooting the same sequence again, do you want to see what I can bring? And he saw that and he said, okay, this is much better. So let's shoot the important things earlier so that she is able to contribute something and she doesn't do exactly what I ask her to do. So yeah, it, it was a funny episode. So this, this, these hours mm -hmm. are not usual, at least for the film industry here. Everyone's, you know, it's, it's more like everyone's up late in the night and then activities begin yeah. later in the morning. So. Sai, have you made any kind of changes in who you are or the way you live because now you are a film star? Firstly, that name is very difficult for me to process. I'm you are just, not a film star. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just someone who is lucky enough to do what she loves and uh, she's getting so much of love so from the people around. And I consider myself extremely blessed. But yes, I have made few changes where I'm trying to stay sane and awake post <laughs> 9 and 10 and um, yeah I guess that's one thing. That's your biggest struggle staying up no, after that nine. was I was a, I was a child back when Alphonse woke me up in the night I'll be like is the shot ready I'll just wake up and come the last scene of the film it was just me sitting on the chair sleeping he would say okay Palvi shot ready I would come and go do that and come back I was a child so now I think I've grown up to be a much more That's so <laughs> friendly <funny>. person. <laughs> no, everybody in the set would be shocked because I wouldn't do much with my hair and they wouldn't, uh, because it was Malayalam cinema, they wouldn't expect you to do a lot of uh, touch up work. So even if you have oil on your skin, they'd be like, yeah, it's okay. So it was, it was fine. And I, I'm, I'm very happy that I started off with Malayalam industry. And what a fantastic film. Yeah. I it, mean, it, what a great memorable, debut. What yeah. a memorable character. We yeah. all fell in love with her. Thank and we you. wish to God that she had yeah. not lost her memory. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, that still haunts me. That I'm, they I'm glad it does. It, <laughs> but it's all the director, his vision. And I'm, I think everybody was very overwhelmed with the response because it, I, I don't know if um, it ran, I think, almost 250 to 300 days in, in Chennai. And it was a Malayalam film. That is a huge deal. And I did the film at the beginning thinking that if my friends are all Tamil, if it doesn't work, nobody would know because it's a Malayalam film. <laughs> so imagine from that to this, this was a huge leap. And uh, yeah. So, Sai, do you have any sort of larger ambitions or is it pretty much going with the flow and the stories that come to you that you respond to doing those films? I don't put a lot of thought into um, the scripts that I, um, you know, positioning which comes first or second. I know that I would like to be part of stories that I would like to watch on screen and which I believe that they might enjoy or which needs to be told. 
Um, so it's just that I, I don't know whether I would like to take that extra pressure of um, wanting to create something from scratch or uh, I hope I got the question and no, the what, answer. No, what, right. what, I, what I mean is that just, are you a strategist in any way? No, I, not at I, all. Not at all. I can't think that way because I, I don't. I don't think we. I have so much control over a lot of things. It's just what's there in my hand and what best I can bring or what best I can do at that moment. So I do not put a lot of pressure. I think my biggest uh, fear or uh, fear is my my own mind. It, my mind scares me, so I have to battle with that. I don't have to think about anything else actually. Why does your mind scare you? I think um, for us to feel different emotions and uh, I don't know, uh, at one point of time something that a person had told me might hurt me but years later that wouldn't bother me. It's not because the words have changed or the situation has changed, it's, that, it's just that my mind has evolved. So I think always my mind um, plays the biggest role in making me happy or sad that minute and nobody else has control over that situation. Be <clears throat> say depression or uh, when you're extremely happy or say the day when your film does phenomenally well and it's just in two three hours you come back to normal okay now what do I do next so I know that uh, uh, a lot of things don't make sense and <laughs> my head and I have to have a conversation to you know come to a neutral plane yeah and and you said that someday when uh, you tire of cinema or cinema tires of you, it's gynecology? Yes. Oh, yes. Previously, it was uh, cardiology. Uh, I think growing up, I thought, why should women always be gynecologists? And that was the attitude I had when I was a child. But after I came back to India, I think that um, we need more gynecologists because women tend to, or at least, you know, sometimes you get a little judgmental. People get a little judgmental and... I'm, I'm just worried that people are not going to open up about their health and I thought I think I can contribute to this field or I can be of some help so gynecologist. That's going to be amazing. I like, think imagine so. a woman just walking in and there's Sai Pallavi, the gynecologist. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be the fun, I'd, I'd say 40, 45, I'll be the fun aunt Pallavi that you come to to share your problems and they won't feel bad, not like they're talking to a doctor. I'll have more warmth. <laughs> Listen, I'm hoping that never happens because we need you to keep acting. Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Sai Pallavi. I just did an interview with Anupama Chopra for Film Companion. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.